First of all, I want to extend my appreciation to the Millers for hosting this, and to everyone for coming to support Project Extreme. Obviously, you're here to for us to solicit your support, and I'm sure everyone will do what they possibly can do tonight. But please remember that it's going to take more than tonight. And in the future, Project Extreme is going to need uh, continued help in its Valaha Sakurdi. Uh, by the way, just one word that I have to say it has nothing to do directly with Project Extreme, but uh, tonight is Heishvat, which is the Yelzat of the Svasemis. And of course, you know that it's a mimic of the Hasidim, that Mazar um, Shabbos, to <coughs> mention something about one of the Tzadikim, which is a school for everything. And uh, especially on the Yale side, to say something about the Svarsemis. <coughs> the Svarsemis says, on, on today's Pasha, that Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu that he's going to take the Bnei Yisrael out to Yod Chazoka. The question is, the question is, what's the, what's the Biyot Chazoka? But Hashem needs extra, extra energy. It's Shai Yod Chazoka. And, uh, so the Svasemba uh, says that inasmuch as the Bnei Yisrael at that time were in a very low madrega, and so much so that when it came to Kriyash Yamsuf, the Malachim were saying, why are you saving the, the Bnei Yisrael? They're no better than the Mitzrayim. So Svasemba says, Biyot Chazoka is the type that HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to use extra energy to overcome the Katrikim overcome the objections of, of those who said that the Bnei Yisrael were not deserving. Unfortunately, there are some people who uh, consider that there are some people, some population that are not deserving. Uh, and yes, it's very bad when somebody goes off the derech. And when a child goes off the derech and uh, doesn't keep cautious and uh, gets into all kinds of, and into drugs and all kinds of horrible self-destructive practices. And some people turn away from them. And what the Svasemba says is, Biyot Chazoka, there is no one that's undeserving. And everyone who has to be, who can be saved, uh, should be saved. And when we save these youngsters whose families sometimes have rejected them, when we save these, uh, these youngsters, this is the Nasir Shuta of HaKadosh Baruch that's when we become partners with HaKadosh Baruch Hu in saving people who are, quote, non-deserving. Somebody asked me before, what do you do with a youngster who's having a problem with getting up every morning and saying that I believe Mashiach is going to come? You know? It's been so thousands of years. Right? Mashiach isn't here yet, so now he's going to come. Uh, he didn't come to the Vilna Gon, he didn't come to the Pnei Yeshua, he didn't come to the Chaim Briska, right? he didn't come to the Rogachov, he didn't come to all the Tzadikim. Right? So now he's going to come to me. But if we take a look in the Gemara, the last mission in Saita, which is a frightening, frightening mission. And it tells us what the, what the scene in the world is going to be like <coughs> Before Mashiach comes. The Ikus Mashiach, right in the steps before Mashiach comes, at the end of time. Chutzpe Yaske. There's going to be an enormous amount of chutzpe. The Yoik Yamer, there's going to be a, a uh, inflation. A Gefet Eaton Pirya. There'll be abundant wine. The Hayain Biyoika. But the wine is going to be expensive because there are going to be so many drinkers. Right? So they predicted the alcoholism. They didn't know too much about drugs or they would have predicted that. And then it goes on with all the kinds of things that happen. Then it comes to say, Ben men have a love. Sons will insult their parents, their father. Bas kama behima. A daughter will get up against her mother. Kala bachamoisa. The daughter-in-law will rebel against her mother-in-law. Oy ish, a person's men, enemies are going to be anshe boise. 
are going to be the members of his family. Well, me, yes, I know he's showing, and what can we do? Who can we depend on? We can only spend on a Kaddish Baruch Now, if anybody is wondering whether Mashiach is ready to come now, right, you can see that all of these predictions have been fulfilled. So it wasn't in the generation of the great Sadiqim because that, that, they did, that they didn't have this social deterioration. But it's in our generation. So we can believe, you can tell this young man, right, that the time is now for Mashiach. But by the same token, we are suffering this enormous degeneration among our youngsters. And they come from the most wonderful homes where you would never suspect that there is so much corruption in the kids. And somebody once said, Not to think that the Jewish population is immune to anything. Because anything that's happening in the non-Jewish population and in the non-Frum population is happening within our Frum community as well. Or Hashem, it's not in the same numbers. Right? But every case is a is a elumole. And if a child goes off the derech, it's not only the child that's going off the derech, it ruins the family. How often do I get this problem? It just happened last week. Uh, my daughter is going off the derech. She's the oldest of my six children. What do I do about, do I reject her? If I keep her in the house, does that show the other children that it's the way to go? That I'm accepting it? And if I reject her, well, what are the other good children going to say? Because they're very close with her. Okay. And if I reject her, maybe they'll, let, they'll, they'll go along with her. Right. I mean, these are horrendous problems. And it's not only when the boy or the girl goes off the death that there's a problem with that child, but it's a problem for the whole family. And it says, <laughs> that we have to rely on a Kodesh But But Kodesh Baruch himself says, well, we can't sit down in the passenger seat and tell our college folks to drive. We have to do what we can do and make every maximum effort to do it. And then then we can expect this Yat of And this is what Project Extreme is doing. And when they say that they have an 80% success, I can testify that that is possible. I've been in the field now for 40 years. And I can tell you where success comes from. But let me give you an example as to why success can work. I don't know what went on with some of these kids. Where they got their influences from. They come from homes where there is no television. They don't have necessarily have immediate access to the internet, but everybody gets access to the internet whether you like it or not. And the problem of the deterioration of, be of behavior that's due to the internet is horrendous. And it affects the, the, the finest homes. So we are in a situation where there is uh, tremendous influences on the kids and Baruch Hashem that it isn't worse than it is. But the problem that is, exists is bad enough. And I can tell you a little bit as to why projects like uh, helpers like a Project Extreme can work. So let me tell you a case that I was in personally this was many, many years ago, 30 years ago. I there was a Jewish couple who were in jail in Pittsburgh. Right? And I took them out of jail. They were both deep into drugs. Right? And they weren't in jail for doing mitzvahs, you know? Uh, they were <laughs> deep into drugs and had drug crime. Uh, the young man finished his therapy first, then he was discharged, and the young woman was still there. At that program, we used to have every Monday at 2 o'clock, we used to have a communal meeting where everybody attended. All the patients, all the staff, the, uh, the, the cooks, the household help, everybody attended it. Except for the receptionist that had to keep it safe at the telephone. But otherwise, everybody was involved. And we called it bus stop. Why bus stop? Because at the bus stop you can have 200 people sitting and everybody is going their own way and nobody cares where everybody else is going. So the idea was, are we going to be a bus stop here where each individual is only going to care for himself and not nobody else? Okay. At this meeting, 
every one of the patients were allowed to bring up their personal gripes. This one had it, this time it, this one had it, this time it. And the leader of the group would listen to it and we tried to work out the problems. At the end of this meeting, so it sounded like all the gripes had been handled. The uh, therapist who was leading the group said, well, everybody happy now? All the problems were solved? So one woman, who is a therapist on the staff, says, no, I'm not happy at all. In fact, I'm miserable. And if it keeps on going like this, I'm going to quit this job. Hey, yeah. Annie, what's the matter with you? She says, it's Robin. Robin is the young woman who I took out of jail. She and her husband. She says, Robin is finishing her program next week, and she is not ready to go out on the street. If she goes out on the street, she's going to relapse within two days. And she has to go to an extended care place for several months. But Robin refuses to go. She says, my time here is up. I'm going out. So I told the Robin, you came here from jail. Right? You've got a, a five-year sentence waiting for you. If you don't follow our orders, you go back to jail. She says, I don't care. I'll take my chances. I'll go back to jail, but I'm not going to an extended care thing. And so this Annie, the therapist, starts crying. She says, I can't take it. I put my guts into her. I can't take it. What's going to happen to her? Robin was sitting on the other side of the hall. So she gets up and across, walks across the hall and puts her arms around the therapist. And now she is comforting the therapist. And the therapist is sitting there crying. And all the other patients in the group started getting on Robin's case. What's the matter with you? You don't want to go back to jail for five years? She says, I don't care. I'm not going to an extended place. But why can't you go with your husband? Her husband is in an extended care place himself. Anyway, this goes on the whole time, and Annie is sitting there, the therapist is sitting there crying. Anyway, it was a, by the time we got through with it, it extended another hour, everybody shouting at each other, and Robin, she is absolutely stubborn. She's not going to an extended care, she'll go back to jail. After the session was over, you know, we were drenched with perspiration. <coughs> the next day, the therapist comes over to me. She says, I want to tell you something. I think Robin can make it as an outpatient. She doesn't have to go to an extended care. I said, wait a minute. What happened from yesterday until today? She says, I can't tell you what happened. All I know is that Robin is a different person today. So we extended her care uh, stay another week. And she went out and uh, did very well. She went into the support programs and did very well. What was the magic that happened? Robin came from a dysfunctional family where nobody had ever given a darn about her. Everybody was for themselves and nobody cared about her. When the therapist started crying and saying, I put my guts into her and I can't see what's going to happen to her, this was the first time that she felt that anybody genuinely cared for her. And that made the difference. That broke through the resistance. And uh, she did very well after that. This is what happens when you have a staff that isn't there just working for the panosa, which of course they need. But they give themselves over the levenefesh so that the person feels that somebody genuinely cares for them. Like I said, these people come from some fine homes, but some fine homes can be very dysfunctional. Uh, a number of years ago, there was an emergency meeting called by, I don't know who called it the meeting, but it was for the representatives of all the firm communities, the Siddhisha, the Yeshivas, the Siddhisha groups, whatever. And one person got up and he was, he was talking in Yiddish, but he said, uh, what do you think, in my days when I was in Yeshiva there were no bums around? Sure, there were bums, but I didn't associate with them. I didn't want to lose my father and mother. Because the problem today is that kids don't have a father and mother. The father and mother are way too busy 
doing other things, and they can't give their attention to the kids. So the child comes over to the father. The father comes home late at night from work, right? And he's got a beeper, right? He's got a beeper and a cell phone. And uh, he's on the phone talking to somebody. And the child comes over and says, Tate. He says, who says that? He's like, I'm busy. That can happen in a very fine family. The pressure on some families is such right, that parents don't have time to devote properly to their children. And when that happens, the children are hungry for companionship, they're hungry for somebody who will take them in, and there is a group in the street now that will take them in. Now, 50 years ago, that didn't happen. 30 years ago, that didn't happen because there was no group on the street. And if a young man in yeshiva, or a young girl in, in Neshankar, wanted to go off the deck, well, she had no place to go to. Right? So she stuck it out, or he stuck it out. And Baruch Hashem, some of them survived. That's not the case anymore. There are so many children now. Well, first of all, the population in the yeshivas and the Neshankar has increased enormously. Right? And so there are more people who drive out. But of the dropouts, they have formed the clique, they have formed the group, and they welcome whoever comes in. Now, if you want to belong to the to the group that are Talmudim, right? Well, then you got to have you got to pay the dues. You got to be a good Talmud. You got to be the, the good Talmudah. And if I don't make it, and I don't have the effort, and I don't have the success, I feel left out. I don't belong. Oh, this group in the street, you don't have to pay severe dues. All you got to do is smoke marijuana. Smoke marijuana, Michelono. You belong to us. And you got some place to belong to. And these children, these young men and the women, have to find out that they belong to Claudia Soil. And we have to work with their families so that their families should be able to accept them. There's enormous problems in the families accepting a child. As I pointed out, there was another case of a youngster who went through a program in Pittsburgh. And the child, young man, was 16 or 17 years old. He did very well. But his family lives in Borough Park, and they're all with payas and whatever, and a beard and payas, and, and this guy won't, won't put on a yarmulke. And the father says, what am I going to do? Is I going to take him home? How can I take him home in a, in a condition like that? Well, these are horrendous problems. We have to work with the families and get them to be accepting and help them make the proper adjustments to be able to take these kids back. And this does not happen by giving an injection. This does not happen by giving any tranquilizers, by giving antidepressants. And this doesn't happen in treatment of a two or, or, a two or three weeks. This happens over a period of months, of months of dedication working. And then after the person leaves, to be able to keep up an ongoing relationship with him. They don't graduate. can never graduate Project Extreme. And the wonderful thing about it is, that those people who have, quote, finished the program and are now continuing with the outpatient support, they become now people who can work with newcomers. And that's the success of any program like Project Extreme. So, this is the Biot Chazoka. It's the Biot Chazoka from Gav Kodesh Baruch and it's the Biot Chazoka that we have to exert. Now, the staff will do its job. But they can't do it unless, unless there's support for, the, for keeping the program going. So I'm sure that you came tonight because you wanted to participate in the program, and I'm sure you will. But remember that your support doesn't end with tonight. And it's a kind of thing of color. It's saving a child and saving the whole family. Now, unfortunately, we didn't have the opportunity to bring one of the... Uh, children here to tell you their personal testimony and other conditions, other situations we have. But you can hear a young woman who is now uh, either employed as a secretary or whatever her job it is, some of them are even married and have children, and get up and tell their stories as to where they came from and what like, life was like on the street getting beaten up and engaging in all kinds of obnoxious, disgusting ways and see them getting up and speaking, telling them their past, telling them what it was like and what happened and what they are like now. And when you see something like that, there is no amount of money uh, that uh, is too much to, 
to uh, bring cases like that upon. So each one of you, each one of you can can you, can you consider yourself an adopted parent to, to one of these children who may have biological parents and may even go back to their biological parents, but you will have a chilek in them. As the Gemara says, when you help a person get on their right feet and get into a uh, proper state, it's considered as though it's your child. So please keep this in mind tonight and in the days ahead and the weeks ahead. Project Extreme is life saving. It's probably the best example of Pikul of Nefesh that I can think of. Zakhadish Balfa should reward you handsomely and they give you a hatzloch and everything you do. And particularly since this is in the field of helping children, the Mida Kenegid Mida Kodesh should give you much machas from your children and from your grandchildren. And as I said, we've reached the stage where the Gemara says that Mashiach is around the corner. And to be Zaycha, it's been the Kabbalah Mashiach, the male. Amen. Amen.